Typically, a single payment would be broken up into smaller payment packets, and these packets are secured with execution conditions, so they can't be lost or stolen by intermediary connectors. Okay, so let's kind of look at the, the bottom little diagram I have there, and this is a cross-currency example. So, you know, when I said sometimes cutting out intermediaries reduces uh, delays and costs, there are other times where intermediaries are actually adding value to the system. So if we think of a cross-currency example where a sender wants to send US dollars and a receiver wants to send, uh, receive rands, and your institution only has dollars and my institution only has rands, then we need an intermediary who has both dollars and rands so that they can take the dollars and send on rands instead. Okay, and basically what we have here with these intermediaries is obviously they will then add on some kind of transaction fee to get something out of this and they'll have to apply exchange rates and things like that. Okay, so to in order to make this kind of communication seamless because this is what interledger wants to do we want to say i'm sending dollars but i actually don't care what my recipient wants to receive this value and if they want rands great you know it shouldn't concern me interledger is trying to solve these problems to make this more simple so a lot of the layers in the protocol are dealing with questions like how do we communicate with other uh, connectors on the network you know how do we speak the same language and understand each other how do we ensure that this communication is secure uh, should how do connectors know like does the sender actually have sufficient funds to be making this payment um, connectors need to be able to adjust the amount so that they can include their transaction fees or handle exchange rates we have a lot of routing questions that need to be answered like if a connector gets a payment packet how does it know where to send that packet next how does it know what is the cheapest path to take through the network and also we want to make sure that payments never get uh, tied up endlessly wandering through the network because then your payment would be stuck in a pending state definitely and tie up your liquidity so we need to make sure as well that payment packets expire and if they expire that simply means that that money that was being held in your account is released again and then payment failed okay these are the kinds of problems interledger is solving Note that the bottom layer is our settlement layer, and this actually is outside of the Interledger protocol suite. This is where the actual transfer of funds is taking place between ledgers, and Interledger relies on pre-existing payment rails. So that's what banks, peer-to-peer um, -peer payment schemes are implementing, ACH, blockchain, mobile money institutions, whatever. All right.